This is the Second Boer War British Armed Forces Emergency Ration Field Service. It was produced anywhere between 1899 and 1902. Now it weighs 11 ounces or 311 grams. There's a soldered cap on both sides. Check that out. You're supposed to be able to grab it by a ring that was attached right here and you peel away. This one has a ring pull that broke off years ago. So someone decided to not open it. Now by the early 1880s, the British Army began developing a more portable ration that could provide ample sustenance to soldiers in combat that are cut off from normal supply. This was produced by the Bovril Company of London. There were several variations of this ration made by Bovril during the Boer War, and many ended up as Royal Navy surplus emergency supply and were used nearly 20 years later in World War I. All right, so again, there's a paper label that would have said on the front right here and right here. This ration is not to be opened except by order of an officer or an extremity. It's to be carried in the haversack and produced at inspections, etc. The ration is calculated to maintain strength for 36 hours if eaten in small quantities at a time. To open the package, tear off the band in the center where two tins will be found, one containing four ounces of concentrated beef and the other containing four ounces of cocoa paste. Instructions for use are on the lids of the tins. The standard British ration during the Boer War was tin stews and meat hash, tin beans, meat, fish, poultry, all canned, evaporated and sweetened condensed milk, and hardtack. Those were your common food items. So this is pretty much the original survival ration. Let's give it a look. Wow. I don't think that this is going to be edible, but look at that. So these are lids on it. There we go. This piece will end up getting me cut. It'll make it impossible to open the thing. All right, so let's get this out on your tray. Nice, okay, well, when your ration's about 20 years older than the 100-year-old the mess kit that it's on, Concentrated beef, four ounces. Remove lid. The beef can be eaten dry, with or without biscuit. Dump a fourth of the contents of this tin in boiled water for about an hour, and it will make one pint of excellent beef tea. It's going to be very difficult to open. This is going to be potentially impossible to open without damaging the can or cutting myself or something. That's no big deal. It's totally worth it. There we go. Look at that. Here's your concentrated beef from probably 1899. Whoa, it still smells like beef. Oh, it smells so foul and, oh man, nice. Look at that. So then the hot cocoa. This has a nice rattle to it. Cocoa paste, four ounces. The contents can be eaten dry with or without biscuit. One fourth of the contents simmered for one fourth of an hour in one pint of water will make liquid cocoa of good strength. Well, it's, it's not going to be edible anymore, that's for sure. And corroded through. I mean, unfortunately, this is the one where it has the, the pinholes. You see that? I mean, it's not coming out either. You're gonna have to scoop these out. I'm not sure if I'm gonna eat anything, and there's probably no real point. You know, that's okay though. I do not mind that whatsoever. You know, this is the sort of thing that, it's just incredible, absolutely incredible to be able to see something like this. That doesn't look so bad under there. Hmm. 
That literally smells like metallic beef jerky. That, that's actually incredible. Look at, look how, um, it, it really is. It's like, it's concentrated dried beef. And I don't even think it's like bouillon. It might be a little bit more to it than just that. I can't imagine this being all that different back when it was uh, still considered fresh. I can't imagine it looking any different, really. I'm going to scrape through this surface here, and then I'm going to get to some part that might be edible. Look at that. It's looking better and better as it goes on there. I'm not going to be able to help myself. I'm going to have to try it out. And once I get past that, ugh, that stuff on the outside smells like metal and rot. And then once you get through that. Yeah, that's all bad right there. There's like foul totally like messed up parts of this and then there's like a center that's still good there's like the edges here I'm noticing it's all coming out easier and it's it's like no good you know the edges got hit by metal and moisture and who knows what something permeated but then the center the center of this seems like it might be okay so that's that's really good I'm just going to keep chiseling away at this and I'm determined to find a part that might be acceptable for consumption. And now we have a dried beef bar. Look at that. That's the coolest thing. That's a landmark right there. All right. So what I'm going to do is this here. I know this is ridiculous, but I'm going to save that. I kind of can't help myself. I can't throw any of this away. I'm going to save every bit of dirt and dust and rust and whatnot from this ration. And I'm going to do what I can to, to put this thing back together, kind of resolder it. Because it could, it could use some restoration. Now look at that. That oh, smells like metal and beef. And I'm going to make, make a beef porridge out of this. Now this is totally inedible. I'm not even going to try and mess with the chocolate. My apologies. Um, that part there, I hope you can understand. It's just it's just going to be like eating rust and dirt and danger. Yeah, this though, this is history in more ways than one. Okay, so I, I kind of chiseled off a little bit more off camera here. But look at that. It kind of has a wood shaving look to it. That is from the Boer War. And this is in significantly better condition than I expected. This side got no corrosion, and it made it. It made it through all that time. I think it's like dried, shredded, you know, pulverized beef. I'm glad that these were separate containers. They didn't react with each other, component-wise, and then also, because this one had the corrosion, that would have transferred to the other one, potentially, and you would have had two compromised components instead of just one. I mean, this here is a shame. I mean, this here is absolutely, this part, I might not even do much with this other than maybe just, oh yeah, look at, it's like a rock. You could chisel it and it has a slight chocolate smell to it, but it smells more like dirt and metal. Really, there's not much you can do with the chocolate. I, uh, wow. It's just. You know, there's really no point in messing with that thing. All right, so let's get to uh, preparing this. I just got to get all of the stuff that has gotten moisture to it scraped out. Like I see some stuff here that turned color. It's like almost reddish, like orange. Let's get that off there. I think it reacted with the metal and some potential air and moisture that got in. This is one of the most fascinating things. Look at that old beef. That is old pulverized dry beef. This is not like standard beef bouillon. This is 120 year old beef jerky essentially. Look at 
But isn't that something? Oh yeah, here we go. That right there actually looks pretty good. I don't know what to do. It's like I really, I really want to try a bite here. Yeah, that is just truly a bizarre food discovery, if you ask me. Pretty much doesn't get any weird. Doesn't get any weirder than this, really. I mean, like, when was the last time one of these was eaten? I wonder. I mean, when was the last time someone even opened one? Sorry, it's just oddly nerve-wracking. Could something be living in this? I mean, did you see how it's kind of spilling over on the lid? I mean... I'm sorry. I'm gonna let that kind of settle on my tongue for a second. That's... That literally tastes like dirt. That little piece was broken off. Let me just take a little less of a wimpy bite. What is that in there? Hold on, I gotta look at this thing. Sorry, I don't mean to be like playing with my food, but oh yeah, it's nerve wracking. What am I doing? Is this like the oldest beef ever eaten? That tastes like bread. That tastes like bread and beef, and there's like little pieces of bone or something. There's something hard. Ew. I'm letting it settle on my tongue. I'm not eating that right away. Barely any flavor. Tastes like pulverized beef jerky, old breadcrumbs mixed with cardboard, a little bit of chlorine. That's what it tastes like. And it's leaving a slight film residue sensation. That cow was dead over 118 years ago. That's the weirdest thought. It's kind of morbid, sorry. Okay, here's an interesting story. Here's a collector that um, has one of these and then like a couple repros or something, at least one repro. He was, he had like one sitting next to the other and he was talking about how he found a case of 60 of these remaining, um, a case of 60 of these. He, could, he quote unquote, did not have the funds. So he said he didn't have the funds uh, for it. And this was, I think he said it was 10, maybe it was 20 years ago. Um, someone else was asking, is there any way like we could track it down? He's like, nope, there's no way. I, I'll never be able to find it again. That's disgusting. I'm not eating any more of this dry. Except for this little bit that like, I went and bit off before pre-chewed 118 year old beef bread. Is that like meat fiber? Is that fat? Is that cartilage? Is it bread? You know, a grain? I don't really know. But if, um, if this is anything like the U.S. Army emergency ration of World War I, then this is some sort of grain in there mixed with beef. And you can see these, like, little fibers coming off of it, dry. Like, you ever take beef jerky, tear it, like, down the center and you see all the little meat fibers like I can see tons of those coming off of this it just tastes like there's there's so much like bone and cartilage and stuff mixed in like it's filled with that and when they say boil it for an hour yeah that's definitely the way to do it that's that's what we're gonna do with this here and then this here I'm going to save their various reviewers and people that are going to want this 
and I don't need it all. This literally says eat it dry or with, you know, with or without a biscuit or boil it for an hour. There are no other instructions. So, all right, so it's been a couple days. It's been two and a half days and I ate the couple bites. That's what you want to do sometimes. You don't want to dive right into 100 plus year old beef. So I left everything on the set. That doesn't smell too bad. You know what? That actually reminds me of the smell of fish food. Take this to the side. We're going to be boiling this for an hour. And it's good to know you can eat it dry and not get sick. All right, there we go. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna set this here. This is the Cooking with Steve 1989 show. We're going to be cooking 118 year old dried beef from the Boer War. All right, it's the only thing I have here. Paper towel. Oh yeah, look at that. Oop, there we go. Ooh, that instantly has a kind of stale smell. That's... If you've ever gone to a food truck and they, they have hamburger, and the hamburger isn't pure beef, there's like flour mixed in with it. That's what this kind of smells like, but then also stale. Ooh, yeah, and with no seasoning. We're going to put this back on. Like every 10 to 20 minutes, I'll, I'll take the, the lid off and we'll check it out. All right, so I'm, I've been boiling it for only seven minutes so far. Oof, yeah, that's just, there's a smell. It tells you whatever this is, it's not appetizing. It's been boiling for exactly 15 minutes. Oh man, I stepped out of the room for, I guess like 10, 15 minutes. It smells awful in here. So about 30 minutes. Oh, it just wafts this like foul beef smell. All right, so it's been about 40 minutes. You can see how it's rendering down there. Oh, it just smells awful. Oh, it's not, that's good. Oh, really? Oh, just poking it around. It just keeps making me like wheeze. That's the only way I can put it here. Let's get a better look at this while I'm scraping it about. I'm glad it didn't burn like scourge onto the, the pot. Look at that. Oh, that is, if you could smell it, like, listen, it, it's not normal if it can make me wheeze like that. I mean, imagine how grateful you'd be. Your officer says, all right, bust out your emergency ration. And guys are sitting around making hot cocoa and then variations of stuff like this. So there you go. You can make a porridge of sorts. Ugh, man. You know, this is, um... This kind of reminds me of like that F grade beef. It's like steaming hot. I'm gonna try here. Let's like get a little bit juicy. Oh yeah. Okay, let's get a little bite. Hold on. Hmm. That's kind of lacking in flavor. I'm like kind of just getting a small amount. So it just tastes like a, that's weird. It kind of tastes like beef mixed with refried beans actually is what it kind of reminds me of. But then like, hmm. Whoops. What's that? 
you know? That's a, that's fat or something. Hmm. I'm biting down on that and it's just, I don't know what that is. Yeah, it just, it definitely smells like foul meat, you know? There we go. Well, if you were a, a soldier during the Boer War and you're starving and um, you're in South Africa and all you have is this and some hot cocoa, sorry, literally my heart is pounding because I know this is so abnormal and just probably not safe, especially from the way it smells. It can't possibly. Two bites before was one thing. I thought cooking it would be okay. This doesn't smell like that great at all. It's like a meat grain porridge. Probably fry this in little patties. I keep going for these little wimpy bites thinking like by taking smaller bites it's going to be safer or something. Might as well just go for it. Oh, that is just... I don't think I can do anymore. What am I doing? There's just all this fat and cartilage. Whatever this was, was never that great. It seems like there's some liver or something in there. It's metallic. It's foul. It's old. 118 year old foul meat. And I think I'm going to stop at this because it's... Oh, there's that white piece from before. What is that? It's just like old cow vein. That's kind of freaking me out. Oh man, what am I doing? Hmm. Meat paste. You know what? You could you could do a lot with this. It seems fairly versatile. Get your mess cup or whatever it is you, you're cooking in. Maybe like four or five guys. You know, throw a portion of their their meat part into a into a pot. Who knows how they did it? Might as well just finish this last bit. Wow. Tastes like coarse ground liver cartilage. I mean, I don't really know what. Okay, so it's been two more days. And, um, my apologies, this has been the strangest review. I mean, really, what can you do with that old beef? My theory to this is, this ration could have easily fed ten men. Literally, some really watered-down cocoa and, uh, like, just a thin porridge. In a, in a serious survival situation for a group of guys, something like this actually could stretch out much further than just for one man for 36 hours and my guess is those those soldiers back then there was a very good chance these things were lasting them for much longer than 36 hours i'm not going to make a tea i can't i can't ever smell that that stuff heated up ever again i can't ever eat any more of it i'm going to freeze this i'm going to keep this inside of the tin close it back up solder it. I felt a little bit sluggish after eating it. I didn't even get the sweats or anything. I just, there's probably all sorts of different animal byproduct in this. You, you name it, it's probably in this. And that's why it smelled so bad. It's just cheap meat. I'm going to save this and most of it will probably be given away to other reviewers. Maybe a scientific analysis, maybe somebody else that can take it and recreate it for some sort of uh, proper reproductions. Well, anyway, this was a Boer War era, 1899 to 1902. British Armed Forces Emergency Ration Field Service. The great-great-grandfather of survival rations. Who knows what this stuff is? It's the, uh, the original mystery meat. Well, anyway, this is Steve1989. I hope you liked the video. I'll be coming back at you with something new. Harold. All right, cool. See ya.